Welcome back to Self-Serving Skillet. For this month, I'm doing an entire month's worth of episodes dedicated to... I'm going to express an unpopular opinion here. I don't love pasta. Let me explain what I mean. At least in American culture, pasta is just sort of this filler ingredient that isn't really used very excitingly. You don't put a lot of thought into it. I get about as excited for pasta as I do for white rice. Now, one of my favorite things to use in a recipe is short grain brown rice. I love the chew that it gives and the flavor that it gives. It's just really one of my favorite little tricks. So it's not rice that bothers me, it's this idea of, of the kind of filler ingredient that doesn't really have this place. I also love a well-made pasta and a well-thought-out pasta dish, and I've done those on the show before. Stepping to the side for just a minute, one of my most popular videos today is how to make ricotta cheese. And so I had a subscriber send me a sort of non-traditional ricotta cheese recipe or recipe using ricotta cheese, and it got me thinking, what else could I use ricotta for that doesn't involve pasta? Small saucepan. I have about two cups of frozen blueberries here. If you get more than you can eat, freeze it. You'll be able to use it later. And I'm gonna throw about half of them in the saucepan here and turn my heat onto a medium heat. The only other things I'm gonna need, this is uh, about a rounded tablespoon of granulated sugar and just a pinch of salt. What I'm making here is a blueberry compote. What a compote is, is fruit that's been boiled in syrup. And in this case, this is going to be blueberries boiled in blueberry syrup. I'm gonna smash this fruit down just a little bit until these juices start coming out and mixing in with the sugar. And we want this to get thick and jammy, maybe about six minutes, seven minutes. Medium heat. After it's become a little bit jammy, I can move on to the next step, which is to zest a lemon. Now, blueberries and lemon work very well together, but you don't have to use blueberries and you don't have to use lemon. You could use strawberries and lemon, work very nice together. So do uh, cherries and lime, although cherry's not really a berry, but if we're gonna split hairs, uh, botanically, blueberries aren't a berry either. What else works nice together? Um, raspberries and grapefruit are, are really pretty pleasant together in the right proportions. You could use a lot of stuff. I'm about three quarters of the way through this lemon. It's kind of a lot of lemon for a single serving pancake, so I'm gonna taste it. Yeah, I'm gonna use this whole thing. And then depending on how much lemon flavor is in here already, I'm gonna take a little bit of this lemon juice. Yeah, not much. Maybe just a cheek of lemon. Whoops. Maybe just a cheek of lemon. Let's squeeze it in here. I'm gonna add the rest of these berries. Bring it to a boil and then take it off the heat. Alright, just came to a boil. Set it over here to cool. Batter. Now in a lot of pancakes we use buttermilk because it's acidic and it helps the baking soda to activate, it helps our pancakes to rise. But uh, in this, the 
ricotta cheese is already slightly acidic. It's about as acidic as a cup of coffee. So we're not gonna use buttermilk. We're gonna use some water. I want about three ounces of water, 80 milliliters, and to that, I'm gonna add about four ounces, 110, 115 grams of ricotta cheese, and mix that in. Whisk is a much better tool for this. I'm kind of a kitchen minimalist. I don't like a lot of gadgets, but there are a few things that I can't live without, and a whisk is one of them. I would rather run my entire kitchen with a cutting board and a chef's knife, and a whisk, and a mixing bowl. Sometimes other things do make our lives a little bit more convenient though. But anytime you want to check out the things that I use, I usually leave a list in the description below, some links so that you can both get your gear and support the show at the same time, because if you click any of those links, I get a small commission. In case you missed that, that was an egg. And I'm going to go for a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And those are my wet ingredients, sort of a uh, ricotta custard. Now for this particular recipe, I thought I was bleeding, I have blueberry on me. For this particular recipe, I'm using cake flour or pastry flour. It has a little bit of a lower uh, protein content, so it's not going to create as much gluten, which will lead to a softer pancake. Want about 90 grams of that, or three quarters of a cup, sifted and all that stuff, which is why I don't like to do it. A teaspoon of sugar and baking soda. Make sure that everything in both bowls is pretty well mixed because you're not going to mix any further. Get yourself a rubber spatula and about half of the flour mixture at a time just sort of fold into your batter and it doesn't matter if it's lumpy, in fact we want it to be lumpy because those lumps are going to rehydrate or I guess hydrate for the first time in our batter. If we overmix it, we start to form a lot of gluten, which will make this more like a bread and less like a cake. maybe 15 or so minutes. Ta-da! Yeah, it's got some bubble action going. Ready to go. So I'm using maybe half a tablespoon of butter here. I'm starting to see a little bit of bubble action with that butter. I'm gonna wait until I can hear a hiss when I throw some water on it. That's more like it. You can make these as big or as small as you want to. Once they hit the pan, they sort of need to take their own shape. Once you start to see bubbles popping on the top, that's a sign that the baking powder is working. That and dry edges around, well, the edges, that's when you're going to flip. Now my flipping method, I want, I covered this in my pancakes for one video. It was my very first video. I want a large surface, but another good tip is to get in on the edge that you're going to flip be flipping first and the rest of the pancake will sort of turn around there you can see that little bit of rise that's the rest of the baking powder hard at work making your pancake nice and fluffy when i start to see a little brown 
on this edge here that's exposed, that's when I know it's done, or at least when I'm going to check it. Checking things by poking them with your fingers, that's learned. That, that's a learned experience that you get over time by cooking a lot of stuff and just learning how it feels. So don't worry if you can't do it. Poke it anyway, see how it feels, and see how that matches up to your experience when you eat it. Let's put a little bit of the blueberry and lemon compote over the top here. Oh my god. <laughs> this is just so moist and decadent and delicious. It's a really just such a wonderful pancake. That ricotta just is really a game changer here. Mmm. And the blueberry and lemon complement it so nicely. All right. Mmm. Get in the kitchen. Make yourself something amazing. Let your hunger be your inspiration. <laughs>